Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Hello everyone, um, welcome to uh, the lecture today and uh, we would like to start the new topic uh, on uh, strengthening mechanisms in crystalline materials. So when you talk about strengthening mechanisms, uh, if you look back what all the background that is required to uh, get the grip on this subject is like again I as I mentioned the earlier section some idea about uh, crystallography and uh, dislocations and stress fields and uh, so on okay so when you say uh, strengthening mechanisms you are going to strengthen we are going to talk about strengthening the uh, crystalline lattice right so there are several ways by which you can do this uh, uh, process so we would we would like to see one by one and uh, before we really getting into this topic suppose if you uh, consider the the fundamental ideas that is uh, you know uh, required to grasp before we get into this is like uh, stress fields uh, in the lattice suppose if you we talk about uh, solid solution strengthening and then the the stress field around the uh, solid solutions right that is uh, that is one primary concern the other thing is uh, we we just talked about uh, a lot is a dislocation and the stress field and strain field around the dislocation also has a important role to play in fact it has got a primary role to play because we are going to talk about uh, dislocation um, mediated activities or like you know, deformation we talked about dislocation mediated plasticity here also when we involve uh, plastic deformation to uh, incorporate the strength then again the same idea will bring in but then if you talk, talk about solid solution strengthening, uh, that is a first one to look at it. Then you talk about uh, two things. Uh, as an addition of solid solution, I mean addition of foreign atom to the uh, matrix, then what, what all the changes it brings in and what kind of stress field surrounding the solute atom with respect to the solvent atom or solvent matrix so these are all the concerns so we will uh, recollect uh, what we have already seen in this uh, dislocation we, will, we have we, we have this idea about uh, what kind of stress field uh, around the edge dislocation so we have seen that uh, it is uh, quite complicated but we have the idea about the the above extra plane the state of stress is uh, hydrostatic compression and below it is hydrostatic tension and uh, along this uh, you know y axis it is uh, completely uh, hydrostatic there is no shear stresses in this but on the other hand if you look at the x axis there is no hydrostatic stresses but only a shear stresses in both sides so these are all we have already seen and we also looked at uh, the uh, stress field in this form if you recall which clearly uh, demonstrates uh, the whether it is uh, attraction or repulsion in the four quadrant uh, with respect to the coordinates of x and y okay so this is very important uh, to recollect and uh, and depending upon uh, this what kind of uh, stress field is uh, is there in this uh, dislocations and also what kind of stress fields ex exist in the solute environment the interaction energy is going to be decided so the whole strengthening mechanism solid solution strengthening mechanisms that revolves around these two uh, fundamental aspects to so to summarize what is the uh, we have uh, 
idea we have we have the you know the as far as the uh, shear stresses and the normal stresses around this dislocations are concerned we know that the screw dislocation is primarily associated with the shear stresses but the edge dislocation has got both shear and normal stresses in fact the you have one shear stress component and then three normal components in edge dislocations and is they are also hydrostatic in nature and uh, as far as uh, screw dislocation is concerned it is mostly shear component the other important idea we have to remember is uh, the moment we talk about the uh, shear components it is uh, a distortion it is related to distortion of the bond but uh, the hydrostatic or normal stresses we as we talk about it is also related to dilation so you have to remember these two aspects so in in the case of screw dislocations we can talk about only a distortion that is a distortion energy associated with this on the other hand if you talk, if you go to edge dislocation you have both dilation as well as distortion so it is so this it is with this background if you approach the solid solution strengthening then it is easy to uh, understand and then move forward okay so the the first uh, and foremost uh, topic is uh, general description of strengthening we will first uh, look at the general strengthening uh, aspects the strength of a crystalline material is increased by obstacles that restrict dislocation motion within it so uh, to stop the dislocation motion we have seen uh, several forms in fact we, we looked at even uh, friction stress that is you know ex exist in the uh, lattice okay uh, a perfect lattice called the pearl stress we have seen that so that also will have uh, influence here but here we are talking about uh, um, an external obstacle and a foreign object which is going to stop the uh, dislocation motion in the parent matrix this is what we are talking about so let at, let us look at the uh, the schematic here what is shown here uh, what you are seeing here is uh, a matrix where you have all the uh, dispersion dispersion kind of obstacle uh, we are not defining this and this is the dislocation uh, motion direction so and uh, what you are seeing is the, the dislocation line which is trying to pass through this obstacle uh, and then what you are seeing here is uh, it is the, the, these particles are trying to stop that's why it is the dislocation line is getting bent here bent over here and the the angle between these uh, two uh, line tension uh, we call it and it is uh, phi c and then the distance between the two obstacle is uh, l prime okay so each particle in the matrix is considered as a obstacle here so what we are really talking about is the stress required to overcome the obstacles depends on the effective spacing l prime between the obstacles along the dislocation line and the angle phi z to which the dislocation bends before it breaks through them it's a kind of you know extrusion between these two obstacles they this this dislocation line is uh, are trying to come out or extrude themselves between these two obstacles that is what we are trying to show the stress required to produce continued motion of the dislocation through the obstacle array is the macroscopic yield or flow stress so this is one way of you know a, a holistic uh, view what is that we talk about as a macro uh, macroscopic yield or a flow stress which is nothing but the the stress required to produce a continued motion of dislocation through the obstacle array of obstacles it could be uh, any second phase particle or it could be and defects it could be boundary etc etc okay so this is uh, that is that is the idea now we can have this obstacles in the uh, different forms 
the obstacle strength essentially determines the flow stress. So we are talking about here uh, the second phase particle in the matrix, but then whether the second phase particle is uh, hard or soft enough as compared to matrix. There is always a relative comparison of the hard or soft nature of the second phase particle with respect to the matrix. That is why the strength, the term strength comes into picture. So strong obstacles resist dislocation penetration. So now we are talking about the other elements like the dislocation not only gets stopped, but it also will stop them to penetrate the particles or penetrate the obstacles. Okay. Okay. So this is reflected by phi c approaching zero. So what is phi c approaching zero? You can see that these dislocation lines, they are all trying to extrude between these obstacle particles. Then the moment, you know, it is the penetration is completely resisted, then you see that the phi c is almost becoming zero. So that is the idea. So the phi c is zero. The spacing between obstacles is also important. So in, in the strengthening mechanisms, especially of this type, that uh, obstacles uh, dispersions, dispersion strengthening or uh, uh, you know second phase particle in the matrix, the spacing between the obstacles is a quite important parameter. If you look at this image, uh, this is also showing some second phase particle in the matrix, but the situation here is quite different. What, what is the different here? Here the dislocation line is not you know, curved like this. That means the obstacles are pinning this and then resisting the motion and, uh, and then the dislocation line is trying to extrude between them. But here the dislocation line is simply travel through or penetrate through, cut through all this. Okay, So that's the difference. For a strong obstacles, the effective spacing is the mean spacing between the obstacles on the slip plane, yeah. If on the other hand, the obstacles are weak, phi c is very large. So this is a difference. So we are talking about phi c approaching zero here, but here it is, the, the line is just simply going to move like this. So there is no, I mean, uh, significant influence of phi c here. Phi c is almost equal to 180 degree. So the, the, the angle between this, uh, the dislocation line and the obstacle will be almost 180 degree. That means the dislocation line is much straighter for the situation of weak obstacles. So this is what it is penetration means. Okay, The dislocation is cutting through or penetrating through. As a corollary, the effective obstacle spacing L prime is much greater than L. So very important point. So here, if you in the previous case, when the obstacle is completely resisting the dislocation line to penetrate, then the effective spacing is uh, different. That is L here. But on here, it is not like that. The dislocation is simply going to cut through. For example, if you take this particular line, and uh, what you are see, uh, he, seeing here is one particular city here, one particular city here, which is measured as L prime. But at the same time, you can also see the other particle sitting here, other particles. So it is an average of these particle distances that is going to be L prime. Okay, not just uh, the distance between the two particles. So there is a difference between a hard and a weak obstacles for the dislocation motion. This is very important. Okay, the stress required to overcome the obstacles depending upon sorry depends on the effective spacing l prime between the obstacles along the dislocation line and the angle phi c to which the dislocation bends before it breaks through them okay this is important so the stress required to bend the dislocation to the angle phi c is calculated in a manner analogous to that used to determine the stress required to operate frank reed source you see now we know what is frank frank reed source we have uh, already seen this and uh, how did we calculate the stress required to generate the uh, the dislocation multiplication so we have to recall that so we we introduced a term called 
line tension, right? So an appropriate line tension balance, taking the dislocation line tension as the GB square by 2. This is what we have seen. If you go back and see, this is what we have uh, shown already. At the critical angle shows that the necessary shear stress for the continued dislocation motion is tau approximately equal to GB divided by L prime times cos phi C by 2. Okay where L prime is the effective spacing. See, what you have to uh, remember now, any expression we are uh, showing in this, uh, at least uh, these domains, they are all semi-qualitative. Okay, It is uh, semi-quantitative, not qualitative. Qualitative, it is mostly qualitative, but when you try to uh, do a quantitative, it is not 100%. It is a semi-quantitative expressions mostly because the complexity in, uh, in uh, complexity of the problem. You, you are seeing that, right? How complex uh, it is. So most of the expressions, uh, what you are going to see in this uh, particular section, is uh, semi-qualitative in nature. Okay. As noted, for strong obstacles, phi c is equal to zero and L prime is L, thus the maximum strength associated with a given obstacle array is tau max is equal to GB by L. With the decreasing obstacle strength, phi C increases. Okay, that means the particles become weak. This is what you have to understand. An overestimate of the operative stress for a strong obstacles is obtained when L prime is equal to L is tau for a strong obstacles is equal to GB by L times cos phi C by 2. Friedel has considered the case of weak obstacles and has shown that as phi C tends to phi, L prime becomes approximately equal to L by cos phi C by 2 whole to the power half. Thus, the approximate strength provided by the weak obstacle is given by tau weak obstacle is equal to GB by L times cos phi C by 2 whole to the power 3 by 2. Okay. So, this, these two expressions give some idea about the stress required to surpass the obstacle whether it is uh, when it is weak or uh, strong or you can say hard or soft. Okay, some semi-quantitative idea. So the, the the next mechanisms which we are going to talk about is work hardening. The term is quite uh, familiar to us now. We have already looked at some of the crucial uh, mechanisms which is involved in uh, plastic deformation of single crystals. So we are talking about polycrystal now. So, what is work hardening? So, dislocation interactions during easy glide of a single crystal plasticity provide an example of soft obstacles. Okay. In a single crystal deformation, we, we talked about quite a lot of dislocation interaction and reactions. So, they are all considered soft obstacles. Okay. So, in stage 1 hardening, can be considered to raise from the stress field interaction of dislocations moving on a parallel slip planes. And dislocation intersections produce hard obstacles. So this also we have seen. What kind of intersections will produce hard, exam hard obstacles? The one example is jog. Okay, jog or vacancies and so on. They are all hard obstacles. This is all we have seen. This is manifested by the high work hardening rates of our polycrystals and the single crystals during stage 2 deformation. So this also we know. As we move from stage 1 to stage 2 to stage 3, the, the obstacle generated uh, even within the dislocation reactions, they are quite high. Okay. The jocks are hard obstacles and they are circumvented by dislocation extrusion between them in a manner analogous to operation of the Franklin source. 
So frank treat source also how it produces. We have seen that the, the, the dislocation line is getting extruded between two obstacles and then they join together and then they form a loop and then it continues, something like that. Okay. The flow stress can be described in terms of approximate equation mentioned uh, above. That is, assuming all the dislocation relationship, that is L square times rho is equal to constant, the shear flow stress is then given by tau is equal to tau naught plus alpha gb times uh, into rho to the power half. Okay, so this is one um, important flow stress equation in terms of uh, dislocation density. Okay, we know what is tau naught. Tau naught is a frictional stress. We, we have already seen that. So where tau naught is the intrinsic strength of a material having dislocation density low enough so that the dislocation interactions are inconsequential and the empirical constant alpha represents the correction factor necessitated by the approximate applicability of shear stress equation. Okay. For a BCC metal, alpha is 0 0.4 and for an FCC metal, alpha is 0 0.2. So this uh, uh, particular uh, hardening mechanism is purely based on dislocation, dislocation interactions. Okay. Since we have already uh, discussed uh, quite a bit about uh, dislocation interactions and also uh, plasticity of single crystal uh, and polycrystals a little bit. So the concept here is the same. So that's why I just want to briefly mention here and this uh, equation gives uh, an idea how the dislocation density controls the, the shear flow stress. Okay. The, the next strengthening mechanisms which is important is uh, a boundary strengthening. See, we are now talking about uh, obstacles for the dislocation motion. Okay. And then we initially we said that the obstacle could be dislocation itself or it could be a second phase particle. And then we see that uh, we have also seen that whether the second phase particle can be hard or soft. Okay. But now we are talking about a boundary. The boundary is a very strong obstacle for a dislocation motion. Okay. So that's the, we are going to see that. Uh, Grain boundaries are particularly effective obstacles to dislocation motion. A crystallographic factors do not permit the passage of a dislocation from one grain to adjacent one through a grain boundary. Okay, it is not easy because you know that in a uh, polycrystalline material, each grain is oriented in a particular manner. They are not the same. And that is why we have the boundary compatibility issue and all we have seen while uh, talking about plastic deformation, right? The stress concentration due to the dislocation pileup in an active grain increases with number of dislocation that come up against the impenetrable boundary. Okay. So let us read this sentence again, very important. The stress concentration due to the dislocation pileup. We know the word dislocation pile up. What does it mean? Okay, dislocation get piled up against the one obstacle. We have also seen in uh, this term how the dislocation get piled up against the obstacle in the dislocation mechanics, right? So this can happen within the grain, it's an active grain. What do you mean by active grain? Active grain means this is the one grain which is uh, favorably oriented. That means this grain has got maximum shift factor and orientations are favorable and the slip activity is going on, the deformation proceeds. That's what it means, active grain. Increases with the number of dislocation that come up against the impenetrable boundary. Impenetrable boundary, that means because the next two grain need not be uh, favorably oriented or it may not be uh, experiencing the similar critical result, shear stress to take over or the continue the plastic deformation which is active in one 
uh, x or y grain it can simply pass through there is a problem there is a boundary that's why it's called impenetrable that means the dislocations cannot simply pass through it is uh, it will get stopped okay so that's what it is shown in the schematic you can see that the grain one um, uh, with the diameter d and uh, imagine that uh, this uh, dislocation pile up is happening in this grain one that means the uh, slip systems in this uh, grain are active or multiple slips are happening whatever it is at least you can see that uh, the dislocation is getting piled up against this boundary and this is the second grain and then you have uh, some source is there where the dislocate there is a potential for the dislocation multiplication which is uh, uh, which is there from the boundary with the distance r okay but then to activate this dislocation multiplication in this this stress has to assist the dislocation pile up from here and the boundary stress concentration which is built up here will try to assist that or try to activate that source so that is something uh, we are trying to see so the micro yielding in grain 1 what is micro yielding that means though it is a polycrystalline deformation since only selective grains are going to start the uh, plastic deformation because of its orientation and spin factor and so on so the the yielding will lo start locally here that is why it is called micro yielding so the first yielding is going to take place in this grain and the other grains are not going to yield similar extent where it is favorably oriented that's why it is called micro yielding in a grain favorably oriented for slip may proceed macroscopic yielding so this will all the, 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 this is just one grain we have shown in a polycrystalline so like that several grains may ha may have similar situation but some other rest of all the grains may not have a similar situation to start with okay so the macroscopic flow requires dislocation activity in all grains okay and this may be induced by the internal stress caused by the dislocation pile up at the boundary in grain 1 so now we are to have the com continuous you know plastic flow the cooperative you know displacement of all the boundary is mandatory that's what we are saying if that is not going to happen it is going to create a void or overlap and so on this this we we, are, we have already seen we have a sufficient background to discuss that kind of a concept so so this is what is shown here so the the stress concentration which is uh, you know generated because of this pile up against the boundary will induce the you know the plastic deformation in the other grain like this this stress may cause a dislocation emission from the boundary and may activate a dislocation source at a point r in a grain 2 so this boundary is going to activate this source because of the the stress concentration against it the magnitude of stress concentration depends on the number of dislocations in the pile up and increases with the grain diameter d so this is quite obvious right so the the more the grain diameter the more the dislocation will more number of dislocation will get, join the pile up and the stresses will be more so this process can be described semi quantitatively so like i said all this uh, treatment mathematical treatment in this uh, mechanisms will be semi quantitative in nature suppose tau star is the stress required to activate dislocation motion in the unfavorably oriented grain and these dislocations are located at a distance r from the boundary the stress concentration due to the dislocation pile up in an active grain increases with the number of dislocations that come up against the impenetrable boundary in turn this number increases at the mean slip distance mean slip distance that is the grain size d in an active grain increases 
Analysis shows that the dislocation activation in the second grain occurs when tau applied minus tau naught times d by 4 pi, sorry, d by 4 r to the power half, which is equal to tau star. So, what is tau star? Tau star is stress required to activate, activate dislocation motion in the unfavorably oriented grain. That should be equivalent to this. What are these parameters? In the equation, tau app is the applied shear stress at which the activation occurs and tau naught is the intrinsic stress assisting dislocation motion in deforming grain. The parameter d by 4 r to the power of represents the stress concentration arising from the pi lab. Very important. So, we have been looking at uh, the sh shear stress which is required to move the dislocation and obstacles and so on. Okay. So, what is the pile-up effect? The pile-up effect is this. That is why the parameter comes. D by 4R to the power half represents the stress concentration arising from the pile-up and this increases with number of dislocation in it with the D. So, this factor parameter is going to contribute as the grain size is going to increase. That is how we should look at it. So, if you rearrange uh, this expression, uh, which allows the applied shear stress to be expressed in terms of grain diameter. So, tau app is equal to tau naught plus 2 tau star r to the power half d to the power minus half can be written like tau naught plus ky prime into d to the power minus half. If you write in terms of uh, yield strength, tensile yield strength above, above equation analog is uh, tau app becomes sigma y and tau naught becomes sigma naught plus ky prime becomes ky and d to the power of remains. So, what is this equation? This equation is quite popular. This equation is known as Halpach equation and its prediction that the yield strength of a polycrystal increases linearly with d to the power half has been substantiated in several materials. So, in the boundary strengthening mechanisms, Halpach has, Halpach equation clearly demonstrated that the yield strength can have a profound influence on the grain size. Okay. So, as the grain size uh, decreases, yield strength will be increased. That is what this equation shows. Okay. We will we will come back to this equation in a much later stage Okay, when we talk about uh, deformation and uh, of polycrystals or uh, when you do a mechanical testing what happens. We will have a few more uh, uh, parameters you can modify this and then we can discuss about what is the significance of K and uh, and what is the significance of uh, d and so on and you can just uh, imagine in this equation suppose if uh, d is 0 what happens it becomes sigma y is equal to sigma r that means it becomes single crystal okay it becomes a single crystal deformation but the, the moment it becomes you are in, in bringing in a boundary, then you have the uh, influencing parameter called k here that will have uh, that will uh, give the much more narrative about how the grain size influences, which is a characteristic of uh, individual systems.